Hi there, to start building our game, Monster Tamer, the first thing we need to do is we actually need to go ahead and set up our basic project. Uh, so we'll be building our project from scratch. And so this is going to require us to do things like create index.html page, which will be the web page we show to the user when they load our game. Uh, we'll need to go ahead and install and set up the Phaser 3 library um, from the CDN. Uh, we need to create our Phaser 3 game instance. We'll just do a very basic instance just to make sure everything's working correctly. And then the last thing we'll need to do is run a local web server. And so this is required because in our game, we'll be referencing assets that are uh, local on our hard drive. So this will be things like our images, our audio files. And uh, for security reasons, we can't load those from the local file system. And by having that web server, uh, we can go ahead and host those assets there. And then that allows us to connect everything together so we can test locally. All right, so to get started, the first thing you need to do is create a new folder somewhere on your computer that you can go ahead and open in your ID of choice. Uh, I went ahead and named my folder Monster Tamer, and currently in my folder right now, we just have this project to-do list, and then just some settings for VS Code that we can ignore. And so for my ID, I'll be using VS Code uh, for these videos. And then, so once you have your folder and you have that open in your IDE, the first thing we're going to do is create our index.html page. And so what we'll do here is we're just going to add just the basic uh, structure for our HTML file. Uh, so we're just going to give it a doc type of HTML. We'll do our opening and closing HTML tags. We'll do our opening and closing head tags. And then we'll also do that uh, with our body tag. And so the first thing we'll do in our uh, HTML page and our header is we're going to add the uh, viewport, uh, the meta tag. And so we'll do meta, we'll do name. We're going to set this to viewport. And then for the content, what we'll do is we'll do our width will equal our device width. And then we'll do an initial scale of 1.0. And then we need to go ahead and close our tag. Uh, so if you're not familiar, uh, the viewport meta tag is, a, it was introduced as a way to uh, make websites look better on mobile devices. Uh, so typically a mobile device, it would render a web page at a typical desktop screen width and height. And so you can imagine uh, previously, if we had like an 800 by 600 uh, pixel uh, desktop screen, and we're trying to render that web page onto a mobile phone, it's not going to look very good because it's going to be very, very small because the devices used to have very small uh, display and pixel uh, width. And so uh, this meta tag will let you control the scaling of the viewport on these mobile devices. And what it'll do is it allows you to set your width based on the actual device. And so like the maximum width that'd be available would be uh, that mobile screen's uh, support. Uh, so typically today, most websites will have this viewport meta tag um, because it helps support uh, a mobile responsive website and just makes your uh, content look that much better. All right, so next we'll go ahead and add a title tag. And so this will let us specify the title as shown at the top of our browser when a user uh, views our page. And so I'm just gonna call this just project template. And then what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're just gonna add some minor styling to our page. Uh, so we'll use the style tag to do this. And so in here, we're gonna target our HTML element our body element, and then a new class we're gonna create called container. And so in here, we're just gonna do a margin of zero pixels. Uh, so typically on your web page, uh, your body and your main divs, uh, when they're rendered, there's gonna be a little bit of padding around them, so a margin by default. And so we want our game to uh, bump up right against the edge of our screen. Uh, so we're gonna remove that margin. Uh, then we're going to go ahead and target our width and our height. And what we're going to do is we're going to set these to take up the full width and height of the screen or device that we're currently viewing our game on. Um, so then that way we just have it at 100% automatically. And then we're going to go ahead and add some overflow. And so what overflow does is typically when you have your content on your screen, if it's larger than your current screen size, you'll see like a scroll bar. Um, on some devices, uh, usually like Macs and uh, iPhones, things like that nature, sometimes there's a little bit of padding at the bottom. And so there'll be a scroll bar always shown and we don't want that effect. So instead we're just gonna set this to hidden and then that way our game content will just use the whole screen within size and we'll keep everything within that uh, frame. 
And then lastly, I'm just going to add a minor uh, background color uh, just to, uh, so it's not plain white. And we're just going to do a light gray color. So we're going to do D7, D7, D7. And this will uh, complete our styling. So now that we have our style done, the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and we're just going to add a div to our body. And we're going to go ahead and reference our container class that we added. So we'll give that to our div. And then we're going to go ahead and give this an ID. And so we're just going to give this game container. And so the ID just gives us an easy way to reference this element um, if we need to do anything with it. All right, and with that, we finish our basic HTML page with our CSS. All right, so next, we need to go ahead and set up our local web server. So we go ahead and run and test our game. Uh, so I'm going to be ahead and using an extension uh, that you can get for VS Code for doing this. Uh, if you have a different IDE or a different uh, method of running a local web server, uh, you can go ahead and uh, skip ahead. Um, otherwise, uh, you can go ahead and follow along here if you'd like to use that method. Uh, so in VS Code, uh, you have the options to extend the base functionality of the IDE by adding extensions. And one of these is a really great extension called Live Server by Rurik Day. Um, this will allow you to run a local web server um, with your files and it'll go ahead and host them uh, and it has hot reloading. Uh, fantastic uh, tool um, and I definitely recommend checking out if you're using VS Code. And so to go ahead and add this extension, what you can do is if you go up to view, if you go to extensions, this is going to open the extension sidebar. Or if you have your sidebar here, you can click on this button and you'll be taken here. And so if you search for live server, it should be one of the first results. And if you click on it, um, what you'll want to do is click the install button. Uh, right now I already have it installed, so it just shows uninstall. Once it's installed, you should see this little go live button at the bottom of your toolbar. If you do not, another way to run it is if you open your command palette. Uh, so if you do, uh, so if you go up to view and you go to command palette, um, this will allow you to run commands. And so what you could do is you could do live server, and then this is another way to go ahead and run the live server. All right, so now that we have the extension set up, if we go ahead and click on the go live button, what this will do is it's going to go ahead and open your browser automatically on port 5500. Unless you have that port already in use, then live server is going to fall back and use a different port. Uh, so if we go ahead and do inspect, uh, what we should see is a basic web page here with our div that's using up the full width and height of our screen. And so right now, nothing is shown. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to my IDE and I'm just going to say hi. And we should see that text appear on our browser. All right. And with that, we have our web server up and running. All right, so the next thing we need to do is actually add the phaser three library uh, to our template. Uh, so to do this, we're just going to go ahead and go to google.com in our web browser. We're going to search for phaser three GitHub. And the first result should be to the main uh, repository for the phaser three uh, framework. Um, otherwise, you can uh, go to github.com slash photon storm slash phaser. And here, if you scroll down a little bit, there should be a link to the library and different ways you can install this. Uh, so the library is available over NPM um, if you like to install modules that way. Uh, but for this uh, project template, we'll be using the CDN. Um, so what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to copy the minified version here, so the CDN. And we're going to get phaser 3.60.0. And so one thing to note for this course, we will only be targeting phaser 3.60. And so if there are newer versions available, you'll want to make sure you modify that when we add this to our code. Uh, so what we'll do is we're going to come back to our ID. We'll come back to our index.html page. And then at the bottom of our head tag, we're just going to go ahead and paste in that script. And so as an example, um, if 3.61 comes out, we would want to go ahead and change that back to 60. All right, so now that we've added the Phaser 3 library, we're going to go ahead and create our Phaser 3 game instance. And so to do this, we're going to have to write some JavaScript code. And so the first thing we'll do is we're going to place all of our JavaScript code into a separate file. So we're going to make a new folder called source, and under source, we'll add a main.js file. 
And so source is going to be the main uh, folder that contains all of the code that we write for our project. And main.js is going to be the main entry point into our application. So this is going to be the starting point for our game. And it's going to create our phaser three game instance and basically stand everything up that we need uh, for our game. So in order to reference our main.js file in our index.html, uh, we're going to need to use the script tag. And so the script tag, what that allows us to do is we can write inline JavaScript code, or we can reference a source file, which then will then load that file uh, when our web page loads, and then it's going to run that JavaScript. So we're going to go ahead and do source, and we'll set this equal to our source slash main.js file. We're also going to add a type to our script and we're going to use module. And so at a high level, if you're not familiar, uh, JavaScript modules allow us to use the import and export keywords in our code. And then that way we can dynamically reference the code that we need to reference in one file from another without having to list all of our JavaScript files individually here. And so this is going to be useful as we start to expand our project and it grows, then that way we're gonna have multiple JavaScript files and we don't need to list them all here. Uh, we can dynamically reference the bits that we need at the time that they're needed. All right, so now that we have our main.js file, uh, we need to create our phaser three game instance. And so when we load the phaser three library, the phaser library becomes available on the global window object. Uh, so as an example, if I come back to our browser and if we look in the console, if we do window.phaser, we're going to see that this references an object that is the phaser three framework. And this gives us all of the methods and properties, everything that's available, we can use it from here. And since phaser is available globally, uh, we can go ahead and create our game configuration without having to import anything right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just do const game, we're gonna set it equal to new phaser dot game. And so this is gonna reference the global phaser object and then dot game allows us to create a game instance. And so when we create our game instance, we don't have to specify anything to the configuration. And what will happen is the phaser three framework is going to create a game instance using some of the defaults that's uh, in the library. So if we come back to our browser, uh, what we'll see right away in our console is there is a new uh, console log statement. So something's happening and this is the phaser three banner. And so by default, if you don't turn this off, this will display on all phaser uh, three games. It'll have the version uh, of the library that's running. If it's using WebGL or Canvas 2D, uh, what type of audio, and then just a link to the phaser website. Um, so a lot of these terms, uh, don't worry about them right now. Uh, we'll cover them later and more in depth once we get to that. Um, but just at a high level, that's what's happening right here. And so if we go to the elements on our page, we should see a canvas element. Um, and it was created using the default settings uh, for the phaser uh, game configuration. And so when you don't, um, and so if you do not specify a canvas, phaser will create one using JavaScript and then append it to the bottom of your body automatically. So we don't see anything right now because we had our container take up the full width and height that was available. And so this is down below our other container. Um, and if you remember, we turned off the uh, scrolling, so we're not able to actually scroll because of the overflow. But if I turn that off, we can scroll down. We'll see our canvas has been created here. So now that we've created our very basic phaser game instance, we're just going to modify one thing in the configuration. So then that way we can place our canvas element inside this game container ID, this dev element here. So that way we control where it's placed through CSS. So to do that, all we need to do is pass in one property parent, and then the parent allows you to specify the ID of the div that you want to target. So this is going to be our game container. So if we just go ahead and paste that in here, we hit save, come back to our browser one more time. You'll see now our canvas element is placed inside this div at the bottom of the element. There's nothing in there. So it's just the only thing in there instead of at the bottom of our body. 
And that's it. Now we have our basic figure three uh, game instance. And so now we can start uh, creating our game. As a reminder, there'll be a link to the completed source code in the description of this video. So as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy the content. If you did, please consider liking the video and leaving a comment. Also, to be notified of when the next video is released for this series, please make sure you click the bell icon. Uh, for more great Phaser 3 content, please check out some of the links on your screen now.